Welcome to the first Fruit of the Spirit game. Remember that we are supposed to be showing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives so that we can grow to look just like Jesus. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now it's time to see if you can recognize what types of situations show the fruit of the Spirit. Here's how to play. We'll pick a fruit from the bowl, and each fruit will tell us about a situation. You'll have to decide whether it's a fruit of the Spirit or not a fruit of the Spirit. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's pick the cherries. The cherries represent love. It says, I help my sister do her homework. If you think helping your sister with her homework is an example of love, clap your hands. If you think it's not an example, snap your fingers. Great job. Helping your sister with homework is an example of love. Let's pick another fruit. How about the bananas? The bananas represent self-control. It says, you eat all the donuts, even though one was just enough. If you think eating all the donuts shows self-control, touch your nose. If you think it's not self-control, stick out your tongue. Good job. Eating all the donuts is not a way to have self-control and it's way too much sugar. Now let's pick the orange, which stands for peace. It says, yelling at my mom or dad when I don't get my way. If you think yelling when you don't get your way is an example of peace, then pull on your ear. If it's not showing peace, then wiggle your nose. Congratulations. You know that yelling when you don't get your way is not a fruit of the spirit. Let's move on to the blueberries, which are about gentleness. It says, the school bully trips and scrapes his knee. I help walk him to the nurse's office while other kids laugh at him. If you think helping the school bully is showing gentleness, then wave hello. If you think it's not being gentle, then hold your chin. That's right, helping the school bully get to the nurse is being gentle. The melon represents faithfulness. Faithfulness is when you keep doing something you said you would do, even when it's hard to keep going. So the melon says, my favorite TV show just started, but I finished my chores first because I said I would do them right away. If you think finishing your chores because you said you'd do them is showing faithfulness, then raise both your hands. If you don't think it's being faithful, then touch your knees. Great job. Finishing your chores like you said you would is being faithful. Thanks for playing the Fruit of the Spirit game. I hope you play again soon. Hello, it's me, Funny Man Dan. <gasps> A delivery for me from my friend Yancy. It's lunchtime, so there's only one thing this could possibly be. Foo what? It just says press play. Yes, I get hungry. Hungry. Especially when I don't get sent food. I get hungry for more of you, more of you, God. Um, what? I get thirsty. Ooh, me too. Thirsty. Often around lunchtime. I get thirsty Hang on. for more of you, more of you, God. How can you drink God? When I hear your word, my faith will
please get some lunch? today and you have the opportunity to do what again get stronger in your faith and learn more about the Word of God and Jesus so what a mighty privilege it is to have you guys join me today from your virtual world Woo! but guess what there is no distance in the spirit so we thank God that he's still moving so let's go ahead and pray all right father in Jesus name we thank you for this beautiful day God Thank you for being the Lord of our lives. Thank you for your love. Thank you for being so great, your kindness, your mercy, and for forgiving us. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are God and God all by yourself. Father, I pray for everybody who's watching. God, I ask you to prepare their hearts now to receive from you. Take away every distraction from their mind and let them be filled more with your word, Father. Bless them, Father God, while they're in school and whatever they do through the week. Thank you for covering us, keeping us safe for our families, God, and protecting us from anything that's not of you, God, protecting our bodies and keeping us healed and whole. We're so grateful, Jesus, and we thank you for this day. And Lord, I ask you to speak through my mind, uh, uh, Lord, and um, speak through my lips, think through my mind, Father God. May the words not be hindered or checked by any outside forces, God. May they land into the hearts of everybody that is watching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So thank you guys for joining me again. I'm so glad that you're here. So glad that we get to fellowship together. We have been talking about the blood of Jesus 
during this series. And it has been so great to talk about the blood of Jesus because it's so powerful. We talked about how it's one of the most, it is actually the most valuable, priceless thing that we've been given and that we have. And today we're going to talk about how Jesus was in his mother's womb, his, Mary's womb, right? And how awesome that it is that he remained clean and white as snow. So let's look at the baby on the screen. Do you guys see this baby on the screen? All right. So all of us were once in our mother's womb, right? And we were all babies and you guys were growing in, your, in the womb of your mother. And how awesome is God, right? That he could do something so incredibly amazing. So take a look. In the womb, you see this umbilical cord, right? That's attached to the mother so that all the nutrients are coming to you. But guess what? The blood of the mother and the blood of the child doesn't mix. So let's take Jesus growing in Mary's womb. His blood didn't ever mix with Mary's blood. Actually, if the blood ever mixes, the mother's blood and the baby's blood mixes together, they could both die. So when Jesus was in his mother's womb, guess what? His blood stayed pure and white as snow and very clean. And while he was growing in his mother's womb, can you imagine Mary was like, oh my goodness, I'm carrying Jesus. Can you imagine how incredibly awesome she must have felt better than any queen, better than any princess, better than any king or prince? She was carrying the blood, she was carrying Jesus and his blood, you guys, was in there, never mixing with Mary's, but his blood again remained pure and white as snow. Let's look at our scripture for today. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, I'm going to get you, give you some time to get your Bibles because having the word of God is so important. Okay. I like to put some time out on the clock. We've got 10 seconds. Go run, run, run. Everybody run 10 seconds and 10, nine, eight, come on. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. I'm glad you've got your Bibles. So I'm going to give you a second. Go ahead. Turn in your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians 5.21. Let's read it, okay? i like you guys to read out loud, okay? So read as loud as you can. I want to hear you over the airways. Come on, go loud. But God made him become sin for us. So we can be made right with God because of what Christ has done for us. So let's break that scripture down. I like to break scriptures down. But God made him, who's him, become sin for us. Who's him, everybody? It's Jesus. Yes, God made him become sin for us. So we can be made right with God because of what Christ has done for us. So you all, because we were of a sinful nature and because there's sin in our hearts and because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden when they took of that forbidden fruit, right? And they consumed it. They began to become the knowledge of good and evil. And then that is when sin that became and creeped into their heart and they took on a sin nature, right? But we thank God that he sent him who was Jesus and who became sin for all all of us. And I want to show you, I'm going to do a little demonstration here. Okay. So when Jesus was in Mary's womb, you see that look at all sparkly and amazing. Jesus, so awesome, right? Look and take the water, right? Being in his mother's womb. This, his blood is so incredibly amazing. It never ever mixed with his mother's blood, but his blood stayed pure and clean. Do you know why everybody? Guess why Jesus's blood stayed pure and clean? It's so that when you sin, 
he can actually wipe your sin, sins white as snow. So what happened, you guys? He then became sin for all of us. He became sin. So let's just take this here. So let's just take this. We're going to mix. Oh, he became sin for us. So God became sin. You see that, guys? He took on sin nature for us, for all of us. And his sin now, you guys, or his heart and his blood covers you. And when you ask God for forgiveness, right, then he forgives you of, our, of your sins and you're made white as snow. So as his blood is pure and clean, his precious blood, guess what? It runs through you and I. Have you guys heard of communion? Okay, so when we take communion, we remember the body and then we remember the blood. The blood of Jesus, you guys, it is so powerful and so strong. It's powerful that any superpower that Superman can have, any superpower that Superwoman can have, any power that Spider-Man can have, the blood of Jesus is power. It's so much power that it has the ability to make us in right standing with God. And what does that do for us? That gives us the ability to go to heaven, right? I'm so glad that God snatched us out of hell and he saved us, right? So those of you who've asked God to come into your heart, you've been saved from hell, right? And when we sin, right? Because we don't want to stay in sin because when we stay in sin, that is not good at all, right? But when we repent, God's blood comes rushing in and it cleanses us white as snow, right? So those of you who haven't asked God into your heart, we want you to come into the family. We want all of you to become saved and we want you to know God so that when you sin, you can be cleansed and wiped white as snow. So isn't God awesome? We talked about how we all were in our mother's womb, right? And just like Jesus, he was in his mother's womb too. And guess what? He began to grow in his mother's womb, but he was still continuing to stay righteous and still clean as snow. Because remember, his blood always was separate from his mother's blood. They didn't mix, right? Just like this analogy, right? They never mixed. Jesus' blood is so much different than all of ours. And I thank God for sending Jesus so that he could shed his blood so that we can be made white as snow. All right, I'm gonna give you the ability now, those of you who are out there and you've not asked God to come into your heart, or maybe you sinned and you want God to cleanse you of your sins, we're gonna pray and then I'm going to give those of you who never asked Jesus into your heart a chance to do that, all right? So let's pray first and ask God to forgive us of any sin that we are, we've been doing, whether that's, let's think about those sins, everybody. If you told a lie, that's a sin, right? If you disobeyed your parents, that's a sin. If you did anything that's not been of a pure heart, if you were jealous or if you were mean to your brother or your sister, we know that's a sin. But thank God for his blood that can cleanse us white as snow. So Father, we ask you now to forgive us of every sin, anything that we've done, knowingly or unknowingly, God. Cleanse us, make us white as snow, Father God. And we thank you for your precious blood. Father, we thank you, Jesus, that your blood is powerful. It is incredible and it's so potent that it can wipe away our sins that, that can be cast into a sea of forget, forgetfulness and remember it no more. And God, I pray that whoever's watching who wants to ask you into their hearts, Father, that you'll touch their hearts and they'll repeat after me. So everybody, join in and repeat after me. Jesus, I ask you now to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and become my Lord and Savior. Jesus, 
I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you rose again victorious, Father God, so that I can live for eternity. And God, I ask you, God, to now be the head of my life, live big in me and through me. From this, this day forward, Jesus, I belong to you. Amen. If you said that prayer, guess what? Angels are rejoicing. Everybody's having a praise party because guess what? Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you are going to go to heaven and have eternal life. And you also have access to the precious blood of Jesus so that whenever you sin, you can repent and say, Jesus, forgive me. And your sins will be cleansed and made white as snow. Well, thank you guys for joining me today and learning more about the precious blood of Jesus and how powerful he is and how God covers our sins. And remember, our scripture verse is 2 Corinthians 5, 21. But God made him become sin for us so we could be made right with God because of what Christ has done for us. Okay, try to practice that verse and we'll see you next time. Have a blessed week, everybody. So good.